Hey, welcome to this video about getting started with the Material X plugin in Substance Designer. So first off, what is Material X? Uh, now Material X is an open standard created by Lucasfilm and ILM to define the look of 3D objects. So that means shaders and materials. And uh, the point of Material X is that this data can easily be shared between applications so that you can have a shader in one application, have it look the same in your rendering uh, engine, for example. And we've created a plugin for Substance Designer that allows you to author these kinds of shaders with a graph, uh, so a node graph like you're used to in Substance Designer. Uh, you might be wondering how this is different from MDL. Well, the main advantage is that with Material X, you can create OpenGL real-time shaders that you can use in the real-time viewport in Substance Designer, but also in Substance Painter. So you could create your own viewport shaders for Substance Painter with it. Um, Material X has some Python and C++ libraries, and you have to install those to get started in uh, the Substance Designer with it. So that's what I'm going to show you right now. So first off, if you go to the first link that's linked below in the description, that takes you to uh, Substance Share. You have to make sure first that you're logged in. So at the top right here, if it says login, just click that and log in with your Substance 3D account. Once you've done that, you can go back to this page, refresh it, and click the download button. So when you click the download button, a small six and a half megabyte file is going to be downloaded. This is the first part. This is the actual Python plugin for designer. You do need a second file to actually be able to use it. For that, you go to the second link, which takes you to GitHub. So github.com slash materialx slash materialx. And this is, it looks very complicated, but uh, really all you need to do is scroll down, find the pre-built binaries. And the one that you're after exactly is the first one. This is Visual Studio 2017. So click that and it downloads a 65 megabyte file, a little larger. And once you've got those files, I'm gonna open up my downloads and you see I've got these two here. First thing is we need to install the plugin to Substance Designer. So you need to just do that by manually copying it. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say extract here. You can also just open the zip file and then uh, move it around later. And I'm gonna open up a new explorer and go to my documents. I'm gonna scroll down to documents going to Algorithmic, Substance Designer, Python, and SD User Plugins. And then it's very simple to install a plugin. You just take the folder, the SD Mat X plugin, drag and drop it into the SD User Plugins folder. It just instantly copies over there. Then before it works, we need to also add that Material X binary. So that's gonna involve right-clicking on this zip file. And I'm gonna say extract to a specific folder. Uh, if you don't have WinRAR, you can also just uh, open a, create a folder and then copy things in there. But I'm just gonna say extract two like that. And it creates a folder with the same name as that zip file. Now, before I continue, very important, I have to rename this folder. So I'm gonna select it, hit F2 to rename. And we're gonna strip everything away except for that first material X word. So I have to make sure that this folder is called material X. Then I'm gonna open up the SDMAT X folder that I just copied. Take this Material X folder, drag and drop it into that plugin folder and just drop it down in there. Once you've done that, that's the installation. That's all there is to it. So uh, I'm going to go and start up Substance Designer. Okay, and then once Substance Designer is started, there's a very easy, quick way to verify that it worked. You check up here for these icons and if there's a very obvious blue and pink icon with the Material X logo in there, that means it's worked and you can start creating Material X graphs. So uh, let's dive in and start doing that. And if you're, if you're not seeing it, um, just verify that you've got this Material X folder inside the SDMAT X plugin folder. Usually this is what goes wrong. People forget uh, this one here. So to get started in Designer, you click that exact button we were just talking about. Now you see a graph view, and this is a different graph view from the um, Substance Node graph and also the MDL graph. You place nodes in here, and then you can see the result in the viewport. So to get started with that, first thing that we wanna do is I'm gonna hit spacebar, and you want to place a standard surface. Now a standard surface, is a root node. And if you've worked with shaders in Unreal or shader effects in Max or Maya, you'll know this uh, principle. It's just a standard root node where you collect, connect all your others in here. At the moment in Material X, this is really the only one that you can use within Substance Designer. So this is just what you should be building everything else from. You'll right click it and you say set as root, the color's yellow, just like you used to with uh, functions. 
and then you want to set this up so that you can see it in the viewport. Now, my viewport is switched to uh, iRay. I'm going to switch back to OpenGL. And then you need to load up the shader. Now, this part's a bit complicated. Pay close attention. I'm going to go to Materials and say Load Definition. Then where I'm going to go is in that same folder as I installed it. So Documents, Algorithmic, Substance Designer, Python, User Plugins, MatX Plugin. Then you go into Data, Shaders and standard surface generated .glslfx. That's the one that's being generated currently by your graph right here. So you select this one, click open. And if you check in the list right now, standard surface generated is selected as the currently active shader. So you'll see what's going on uh, here right now. So let's start modifying this a bit. Let's just quickly change the color of this thing. So we're going to place a color node here. So again, spacebar, choose color. And we can hook up that color to the base color. So it's the second slot here. And you see instantly this changes to that color. So if we're going to make it something really obvious, like let's say red, this follows along. Um, just like in Substance Designer graphs, orange is color connections, gray or grayscale connections. So if I place a float, set that to something like 50, and I'm going to collect, connect that to specular roughness, I can now have control over the roughness. So you see, if I slide this around, I control the roughness. So um, if you want to see this in iRay, which is also possible, right now I'm looking at OpenGL, then all you really need to do is right click and say, set as material definition in 3D view. Instantly, this switches to iRay and it starts rendering with that shader. So you can see the results in either of them by easily switching between them. OpenGL takes a little bit more setup to do so. In iRay, it's just easy, you just right click and it uh, creates it for you. Now, the basics are, I'm not gonna dive too much into this, I'll show you an example later, but one more thing I want to point out is if you want to expose something, uh, first thing I would suggest is you, that you give them an obvious name. So I'm gonna call this one base color and we'll call this one instead of float, let's call it roughness. If I then click on this here, and if I say exposed, so right click exposed, not on the properties, right click the node, do the same thing here, exposed, you'll be able to change that parameter externally when you use it elsewhere. So there's actually a way to test that. Uh, there's a material X viewer that comes with the binary that you just installed. So if I click here in view material and material X viewer, you don't have to select anything here. This is if you're loading textures, but for now we don't do that. Click okay. It launches the material X viewer. I can see my material as I created it before. If I go into the property editor and a lot of settings are pre-exposed and not all of them are connected, but all the way at the bottom here, you'll see the one that we just exposed. So base color and roughness. If I want to, I can change this one now to a different color. So I can just pick a different one. I can decide to set the roughness up to a different value here and you see the result instantly. So that's how you expose values. Now, uh, this is a simple case. Let's dive into a much more uh, interesting example to see where you can learn a little bit more from. So if you want to go a bit further and see a finished example to learn from, what you can do is go to File, Open, and then navigate again to Documents, Algorithmic, Substance Designer, Python, the plugins, get into the Maddox plugin folder, then open up the data, samples, and then there's a floor folder in here in which you can find the floor.sbs package. I'm gonna open that up and we'll wait for it to load a little bit. And this is going to give you a, a graph that's been finished in advance. It does quite a few interesting things. It samples some textures, it adds some procedural stuff, it masks something. And you can use this one to learn from a bit. Now keep in mind, uh, something that happens because this is a beta plugin is it switches to iRay all the time and this graph can be a bit slow. So give it some time to catch up and then you can disable iRay again and switch back to OpenGL. Now this doesn't look like much yet. It's because this shader uses some textures and you can actually find the ones to use inside this package here. Uh, easiest way to do it, so this is the Material X shader graph being used to draw it. And then the floor graph in here, that's the graph that generates the texture. So I can just take that graph, drop it in the viewport, it gets loaded and things are being generated. So it's using the textures from the substance graph to render the shader graph over here. So let's just jump in a bit and take a little look at how this is built. Uh, it's got some input parameters that you can actually tweak over here. These are all exposed. 
it sets up a little bit of UVs. And then here you can see the samplers happening. So the base color is an interesting one. This one's set up in a basic way. It doesn't use UVs. So if you've used shader editors before, often you have to plug in UVs to be able to sample. This one's set up really basic. It's uh, usage is set to base color. So it's gonna pick up on the base color, but it's gonna default to UV channel one simple standard settings. Uh, for normal map such as this, you need to set it up a bit more complicated. So this one's getting a normal 2D texture. It gets the uh, vector two UVs, transforms them and samples the actual image in there. Then you can see down here, the procedural stuff is happening. So it's creating fractals and it's multiplying them and mixing them to create a different kind of mask. Adds the rust on top, and then finally everything goes into the root uh, shader here. So this one would be a really good project to try and pick apart if you want to make your own. Uh, one more thing I can point out to you that you can do is uh, I've got the shader open right now. If I pin that and then double click to open up the floor graph, I can have both the textures and the shader open at the same time. So um, this is using a kind of gold for the metal. So if I don't want that, I want to see something different. I can set it to aluminium or maybe let, let's pick something like platinum. That switches. So you can change the textures, work on the shader simultaneously when you have these two graphs open at the same time. So that's a really short introduction to get started with this. If you're used to shader editing, this shouldn't be too new for you. Uh, keep in mind, there's a few quirks. It can be a bit slow, especially with switching to iRay now and then. Just experiment and uh, get started with it and have fun.